Becoming by Michelle Obama. Michelle Obama has been noted as one of the most iconic and captivating women of our era, the first African American that became the first lady of the United States of America. She supported and aided in the most welcoming and inclusive White House in history, while also showed herself as a powerful advocate for the rights of women and girls, not just in the US, but in the whole world as well. In her memoir, Becoming, she invites us into her world full of deep reflection and experiences that have shaped her to the woman she is now. It is the embodiment of a woman of soul and substance who has steadily defied expectations. This will surely inspire all of us. In her early years, Michelle Obama is known in Chicago Southside as Michelle Robinson. She was raised in a brick bungalow belonging to Robbie, her mother's aunt. Growing up, she saw the chaotic status of the United States at the end of the 1960s, where Kennedy's dead and Martin Luther King Jr. being assassinated. Racial segregation and disparities between Chicago's downtown and its south side. On the other hand, Michelle remained positive and continued to pursue her passion for learning piano, jazz music, and Stevie Wonder long before she met Barack. She even started learning piano at the age of four at Robbie's piano lesson. She said that she had never seen a perfect piano in her life other than Robbie's squad little room. Robbie's recital at Roosevelt University in downtown Chicago made her realize how much disparity there is in the world. This teaches us to be proactive about learning and getting a good education, regardless of how good or bad things are around you. Michelle continued to get an education with the guidance of her mother. Michelle's mother helped and pushed her to excel. Her mother was described as tough and had a very high expectations for her children. On the other hand, her father was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, making his body slowly deteriorate. And a couple of times where she and her family come to visit some family friends in a predominantly white neighborhood, they always return to their car and find that someone had made a deep gash into it. Despite all of this, Michelle didn't let these challenges hinder her way. She worked hard in school and got into Princeton. Even if the college counselor doubted her, but she didn't let this to let her down. Another lesson that can be learned from Michelle is that don't let people's opinions of you discourage you. Try for greatness and you will eventually find the people who believe in you. She graduated as magna cum laude with a degree in sociology. That doesn't simple end there. After that, she dived into Harvard Law School, knowing that it will give her a degree of validation and certainty about her future. After law school, she moves back to Chicago and work in a firm called Sydney and Austin. After a year working at that firm, she agreed to be a mentor and summer associate. And there she met the love of her life, Barack Obama. She and Barack quickly strike a friendship, and they begin to date just before Barack returns to Harvard. She describes him as more concerned with a broader potential for mobility than his own wealth. After two years, Barack was able to finish his law school. Meanwhile, Michelle starts to lose interest with her job at Sydney and Austin. She also experienced two losses, the loss of her friend, Suzanne, due to cancer, and the loss of her father. Michelle was heartbroken and made her realize that life is short and she should not waste any more time in a job that she is no longer passionate about. So, she quit and took a series of jobs. On the day of Barack's board exam, he proposes at Michelle and eventually they got married in the summer of 1992 and took a honeymoon in Northern California. When they return, Bill Clinton was declared as the president and Carl Mosley Braun hailed as the first African American woman to hold a US Senate seat. Michelle and Barack went to a series of changes and challenges. She took a job at a company called Public Allies that recruits young people and places them in a non-profit company while Barack won a set in Illinois Senate. Then she moved back to University of Chicago as an associate dean focusing on community relations. This was very important to Michelle as she had gone through a lot of miscarriages. However, in 1998, Malia was born through in vitro fertilization. Michelle had a difficult time on adjusting to being a working mom. Even Barack too experienced some of the sacrifices of parenting when they were on vacation in Hawaii and Malia got ill, making him forced to miss his crime bill vote, losing his congressional race. In 2001, they have another girl named Sasha. Having two kids, and even if they can't afford childcare, 
Michelle insisted to go to work at University of Chicago Medical Center and bring Sasha along. Michelle was happy with her job and finds ways to improve how the hospital interacts with the local community. And also, she was committed on raising her kids. While Barack decided to run for the US Senate and was also chosen by presidential nominee John Kerry as the keynote speaker for the 2004 Democratic National Convention, this made him win his Senate race with 70% of the vote because he became an instant sensation for a 17-minute speech demonstrating how he is the embodiment of the American dream, calling for hope, progress, and unity. After two years in the Senate, Barack considered running for president, though Michelle was hesitant at first because she can already see her own identity slipping away. But she eventually agreed, knowing that it can help a lot of people. During the campaign, they faced a lot of racism and discrimination. Michelle, on the other hand, faces a great deal of sexism. Some people think that she was emasculating Barack by being such a strong woman. While campaigning heavily in Iowa, Malia's body mass index was not good according to her pediatrician. Michelle, who was also busy with the campaign, took care of Malia's problem and hired Sam Kaz to cook nutritious meals for the family. That's when Michelle began to be passionate about their kid's health. She and Sam discuss about the possibility of putting a garden at the White House if Barack wins. After months of hard and heavy campaigns, Barack won the Democratic nomination and won the presidency. This causes a great impact in the Obamas' lives. And so, they moved to the White House, where they received a whole dedicated Secret Service agent, a heavy security detail, and a full-time staff catering to their needs. However, Barack and Michelle waste no time. A great lesson to be learned from them was, don't fear using your strengths and ideas to try to improve the world no matter how prestigious a position you may be in. Barack solely focused on saving the falling economy, while Michelle began a series of initiatives in the White House. The planting garden she was planning with some cause, which helped spark her children's health initiative, Let's Move. Michelle was very passionate, not only to her kids' nutrition, but to all children as well. She even got a large chain companies to cut the salt, fat, and sugar in the meals that they market to all children, and arrange meetings with schools to provide nutritious meals for children. She also got networks like Disney and NBC to run PSAs during kids' programming to highlight the importance of physical activity and a healthy lifestyle. Despite the adverse reactions she was receiving with her decision-making, like to those women who believe that she gave up her career just to become a housewife, to those who believe that she's getting herself too much into policy, and to those who are simply fascinated with her fashion. She also knows, too, that as the first black first lady, she was not recognized to have the presumed grace of other first ladies. Over the two terms of Barack as president, both of them achieved a lot. He was able to pass the Affordable Care Act and started to pull American troops out of Iraq and Afghanistan wars, and American forces were able to kill Osama bin Laden. The US economy was also saved. Michelle, on the other hand, managed to do a lot with her Let's Move and with other accomplishments just like joining forces, which helped the military families, reach higher that aided kids to formal education, and let girls learn, which aimed to help girls' education worldwide. But despite all of these accomplishments, they aren't able to achieve all of their goals, and they feel like they are held responsible for carrying the grieving nation. This happened when a German killed 25 first graders and 6 educators at Sandy Hook's elementary school. Barack knew that there was no relief to be had, but instead he fights for common sense and gun control laws. As Barack's presidency term comes to an end, the next election drawn up, Michelle supported Hillary Clinton. She was revolted with the racist and anti-feminism comments of Donald Trump. Unfortunately, Trump won and Michelle was so disheartened because she was worried with the campaigns and movements that she made for the last eight years might be undone. But still, Michelle was optimistic. She said, no one can reverse all progress. Overall, Michelle reflects on all the ways that she and the country have changed and developed over her lifetime. She concluded that she is an ordinary person who found herself on an extraordinary journey. Neither she nor the country is perfect, but continuing to grow and owning one's own unique story is what becoming ultimately means to her. Becoming helps us to motivate us to move forward with our dreams regardless of our own circumstances. Criticism we met along the way or to what other people think is normal. Let's end this with the words from Michelle Obama herself. If you don't get out there and define yourself, 
would be quickly and inaccurately defined by others.